Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our workshop this Friday. Uh, we have an, uh, today the pleasure to give you the talk title and develop already discovered reservoirs in the middle Magdalena Basin and Janos. And we will have also the illustration of, uh, of some uh, nominated uh, areas. We will discuss the, the technical aspect uh, that we have found there. And we have the, the, the a and interpreters and uh, I, could, I could give you some details in a minute. Okay, just to, to give you good, good news about the, the round 2021. And this is the, the a map with the status of upper and incorporated areas uh, at this time. And as you can see, we have 28 areas offered by the agency, as you have been aware, and nine incorporated uh, areas. So that means that we have three more incorporated areas this week. So we are now counting with a total of 37 areas uh, for this big round. Um, so we, we encourage all of you to incorporate areas. And uh, you know that we have uh, until uh, the end of September, until the end of this month to, to nominate or incorporate areas for their uh, round 2021. Uh, this is the, the, the map with the available areas in the country. We have counted there, with the, the, this is with the new, uh, the new quadricula uh, that uh, you are going to, to have available starting on September 8th. And we have a total of 403 areas as you can see on the map, okay? Well, uh, well on today, September 3rd, we are now uh, covering our second uh, session on undevelop already discovered reservoirs and also giving you some technical aspects of the nominated areas or incorporated areas. And next week, we are going to have a kind of break. We are going to have the, the, a very interesting talk uh, um, by Ion. Uh, Ion has done a very good, uh, great multi-client uh, program on the Caribbean Sea. Uh, so those basins, I mean, the Colombia, uh, Sinu and Guajira offshore so basins. So, so we will have them, I mean, they have a very interesting um, seismic data already reprocessed. And we have, we, you are going to have a, a big, uh, how do you say, promotion um, uh, news during the week. So on September 10th, we will have them. And we also will have also some uh, highlights or some upgrades of the, of the opportunity in the Urawa Basin. And in the Pacific Ocean, we will have also a talk on that regard. We will have Freddy Corredor with us and giving us some, um, some findings of the National University. I mean, Freddy was part of the team that did that uh, fairway, fairway program last year. I mean, so he's going to give us the talk uh, of, of the opportunities in the boundaries with Ecuador. So we'll have ION in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean, in, in the Caribbean basins. We will have the agency talking about the Urawa Basin, and we will have Freddy on the, talking about the Pacific uh, on behalf of the National University. On September 17, we will get back to the uh, uh, undeveloped, already discovered reservoirs. And we will give you the, the or, or findings on, on those opportunities in the Janos. On September 24, we will have also uh, the same topic uh, on uh, undeveloped uh, already discovered reservoirs on the Upper, upper Mac and Catatumbo basins, and also some, some, some highlights of the, of, the, of the nominated areas. Uh, and, uh, and, and that will be the, the end of the opportunity to nominate areas. So uh, September 30th, that will be the, the last day of the month, that will be the, the, the deadline. In October, we will start with the very interesting talks before or the end of this round 2021. We will have the Lower Magdalena uh, talk by um, Dr. Alejandro Mora, uh, a special guest from uh, uh, 
that the specific day, October 1st. And we will have on October 8th and on October uh, 22nd, we will have the same the geological survey talking about uh, their findings on the Paleozoic on Colombia. Great, great uh, talks on the Paleozoic and new province, exploration province in Colombia. In October 15, we will have uh, all the group of uh, eight companies that are doing uh, research teams that are doing work uh, uh, with my, uh, the Ministry of the Ciencias, in Ciencias and the ANH. There, there are in total of eight research projects. We'll have those, those uh, key guys, key professional uh, uh, research uh, people on October 15, so talking about the project, the project that they are carrying out with the, the, the Ciencias. And in October 29, we will have, again, the ION group, we're talking about the Caribbean Basin, second part of the, the, of the reprocessing work. And November 5th, uh, as a closure you know, of our 30, almost 30 workshops during the year, we'll have Cesar Mora talking about the prospective resources, conventional and unconventional, yet to find the, the, the update of that the information. And the last talk will be, the last workshop will be on November 12th. And then we will time to wrap up what we have done during the years in preparation of the oil summit on November uh, 17. Okay, as I mentioned before, we have the pleasure to have four uh, uh, interpreters uh, that work for the a &H, uh, currently. And they are going to talk about the Middle Madalena Basin, they will talk about the opportunities on undeveloped already discovered reservoirs, Glauca, and two nominated areas in the middle mark. And in the Janos Basin, we will cover uh, the opportunities uh, named Java, Seleus, Salahuesi, Abedus, Malawi, Man Maniseño, Supremo, Samari, Toruno, and, and Alice is going to talk to you about uh, two nominated areas uh, for findings. Let me just give you some of a briefing of our speakers today. So you know very well Daniel Rodriguez already, geologist from the National University. He is going to be the first, uh, the first uh, invited guy talking about the middle mark and uh, the Glock uh, the Glock opportunity. He's a geologist from the National University, graduated in 2017, Master Science from Leeds University, 2018. Uh, he has been with the agency during the last uh, couple of years, experience with OXY and the agency. Uh, the, the next speaker for, uh, after Daniel will be Dr. Ma Maria Cecilia Ruiz. She is a, a geologist engineer from the National University of Medellin, graduating in 2006, Master of Science in Geophysics from the National University of Bogota, MBA from the London School Business in 2016. More than 15 years of experience in Serre Home, Joe Serge, Halliburton, Slumberger, Pacific Rubiales, uh, Pacific Rubiales and Metro. Uh, after Maria Cecilia, we have uh, Maria Ma Mari Piragauta, also geologist engineer, graduated from the UPTC University in 2003, Master of Science in Geology and Geophysics of Reservoirs from the Universidad de Barcelona, Master of Science as well in Hydrocarbon Gestions from the Universidad de Villa del Mar, more than 15 years of experience in trajectory oil and gas, petroleum del Norte, Betra, and now currently she's working with, with for the agency at this time. And the, the closure will be given by Arles Gutierrez, well, well known by all of you, geologist graduated in 2006 from the National University. He ran a certifi certificate program in geoscience with the Petro Group, uh, Petro Group training and consulting companies and his agreement with the University of Oklahoma in 2011. He, is, uh, he also has a diploma in general projects in 2012. And he has an extensive experience, more than 15 years of experience. He worked for Gran Tierra, Emerald, and uh, he has been the last four years with the agency. 
Okay. Um, don't forget that you can address your questions through the chat and we will be here ready to answer them. Uh, so welcome to our uh, workshop today, um, Daniel. Okay, thank you, Miguel. Welcome to everyone. So today I'll be presenting, um, as Miguel said, uh, one area that is called Glauca BMM 11 and two incorporation areas that the industry had requested. So let me start with the presentation. So as I said, today I'll be presenting what is called developed already discovered areas near the Magdalena Valley Basin. So into the content, first I will present the undiscovered already, the undeveloped already discovered reservoir of Glauca that was drilled by Parex. Afterwards, we will see the database production seismic interpretation. The next one afterwards, we will see a BFM 53, that is an incorporated area. Uh, we'll see that in today and age, we have identified a couple of, of a prospects or maybe areas of interest into there. Some of them involving structural prospects, another one stratigraphic related to Lisama. Uh, afterwards, we'll be presenting BFM 10. One, the database seismic interpretation and some prospects that we have identified. So the first one is Glauca, which is an undeveloped already discovered reservoir. So this one got an area of 75.5 square kilometers. The block is available. It's an area available for incorporation nearby uh, ENP and production areas such as Palagua and Velasquez. We got as well some uh, contracts such as Turpial. And the BFM 11, despite the fact that all of this area is available, we have focused on into, into this one. It's worth it to mention that the area is located in the department of Boyacá. Here we can see the database that is available. We got two seismic surveys, the Santander 89 and Caipal 84. And we got the 3D seismic that is a good 3D seismic because we got a merge, a big merge of different programs. We got Palagua Caipal 3D 2012 and Orchidia 3D 2004. As well, in terms of uh, <coughs> wells, we got the couple of wells that were drilled by Parex in 2017, Glauca 1 and Glauca 2. All of them, the main target was Colorado formation. However, the production and the tests were carried out into the Esmeraldas formation. We can see that both of them uh, found the Esmeraldas and ho the whole tertiary sequence above the basement directly. It means that we don't have the Eocene, the mineral, the Miocene conformities, and the whole sequence, the Cretaceous sequence. So we got the whole tertiary directly over the basement. Uh, these are the, the DSTs that were carried out by into the Glauca 1. And we can see that we have a result in terms of, of barrels of oil. So into the second segment, that is the one that is below, this one over here, we had a production of 14.65 and 24.65 barrels. As I mentioned before, both of them from the Esmeraldas formation. It is important to be in mind the, 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 the water saturation that we have into those couple of tests. The first one around 70% and the last one around 60%. Those are the ones related to Glauca too, that we had a, a production into this interval that corresponds to Esmeralda formation of around 20, uh, 28 and 53 barrels of oil. And in a second test, in a second series of tests, uh, we had uh, four different production points. The first one with 11 barrels of oil per day. The second one with almost 300 Barrels of oil per day, the second, the third one with 60, and the last one around 190. It means that for both wells, Glauca 1 and Glauca 2, beyond petrophysics into the test, uh, we have found a good production in terms of a daily production. And here we got the cumulative production of both wells that produced uh, during a couple of months. 
And unfortunately, at the end of November, production decay. It seems be because of the stride or the sharp decay that it was due to mechanical issues and non a production related issue. So main values. So the, as I mentioned, the duration of production was two months and the peak oil production was 300 barrels per day. And the peak gas production that we have in here that was during mid November, we got peak gas production of 54 uh, kilo uh, cubic feet per day. This is the seismic interpretation that we have made into the 3D seismic. This is an inline, the inline 620 of the BMM 11 of 3D of the 2014. Here we got the, the line that is this yellow one. We have the both wells that got the rig and the calibushing in the same rotary table, but both of them are deviated wells. So we have here a well projection because as you can see into the structural map is not directly over the line. <coughs> and the one that we are proposing, sorry. <coughs> is this one in here that is against a normal pool. Sorry, excuse myself for that. And here we got the seismic interpretation, how the seismic interpretation and the, and the new normal ports or the normal port that we're proposing, how it has been carried out. So we use a, thank you, a variance um, into the 3D seismic volume. So using the variance uh, seismic attributes, we have identified different sort of ports that we have that we can continue all over the area and the importance of the falls into this area that is making the closure for the for the traps into the westward direction and this is the structural mass that we've gotten those are the highest or the highest estimate area and the best estimate area both of them have been the first one 79 acres and the last one 30 acres so into using a porosity of 19% and 23%, both of them taking into account maybe in soft fluvial sandstones and, and that sort of environment, uh, we have using a recovery factor of 15% uh, and 17%. We have estimated for the best estimate, 173,000 barrels and into the high estimate, 821,000 of barrels. Uh, next one, we got the area incorporated, the VMM 53. That is an area, area located in the Department of Santander and North of Santander, with an area of 520.4 square kilometers. You can see here it's at the edge of the, it's at the border or boundary between Santander and North de Santander. Uh, what is important of this area is that despite the fact that it is available, you can see that it's surrounded by plenty of contracts that are already in production and that are already as EMP areas or signed contracts. This is the infrastructure of the area. We got three oil pipelines with four stations nearby and three uh, and one gas pipe, uh, three gas pipelines with one station nearby. We got for the oil pipelines, we got the stations of Provincia that is inside the area. We got Bonanza, we got Santos, we got Cantagallo. And for the gas pipelines, we got the stations Payoa that it's in fact that it's quite close to, to the southeastern part of the area. This is the database. This is the seismic. We got plenty of 2D or a good coverage of 2D seismic into the area. As you can see, we got 22 seismic surveys with a total length of 1,000 kilometers. And we got three different seismic surveys that, are, that haven't been acquired directly into the area. But either way, we got some parts of the 3D seismic that are covering some parts of the area. Uh, uh, the whole area the, of the 3D seismic that are into the VMF 53 a cover a total of 34 square kilometers. Those are the wells that have been drilled. Uh, we got like two different set of wells. 
one of the the ones that were drilled during the 50s, like a PYX1, Playon 1. Uh, we got Provincia and Reforma, and the ones that were drilled by Ecopetrol in 2011 and 2014, both of them with side tracks and high uh, and deviated wells. Uh, both of them, uh, or most of the wells, with a total depth uh, close to 14,000. And the wells drilled by Ecopetrol, Rumbero, one side track and Rumbero, two side track, uh, both of them got a main target and got a successful test at the Esmeraldas formation. So, as I was mentioned, uh, Rumbero 1 was a well drilled by Ecopetrol in 2011 with a measured depth of 14,000 feet. Uh, three DSTs were taken, DST in 1R, DST 2A, and DST 2B, identified the process of hydrocarbon, uh, of hydrocarbons in all of the intervals. The DST1R had a production of 0.015 barrels per day per PSI. The DST2A and DST2B test weakened the mechanical status of the well. And because of that, uh, they had to make a side track. Uh, so in order to fracture the interval test in the DST1, it was necessary to perform a side track. Uh, it's important to bear in mind that we really need to to fracture the, these two, this, this couple of reservoirs of Esmeralda's formation because of uh, maybe its petrophysical properties or their petrophysical properties. Afterwards, we have Rumbero 1 side track that was a deviated well drilled by Ecopetrol in 2011 as well with an MD of 14,060 feet. The main target of the well was to find oil in the Esmeralda's formation and, and as it did the Rumbero 1. So based on well logs and petrophysics, the well was classified as commercial. Fuga shows were the highest quantity of shows. Fuga shows were the highest quantity of shows were present in the Esmeraldas formation. The well was tested in the Esmeraldas formation, producing a cumulative of 50 and, uh, 562 barrels of oil. We can see here the petrophysics that was performed by Ecopetrol in both of the wells with the net bay and the prospective areas, both of them into sandstone that seems to be uh, amalgamated channels of the Esmeraldas formation. I, afterwards, we got Rumbero 2's, uh, the ones a track that was a uh, deviated uh, J-type, went through by Ecopetrol in 2014 with an MD of 14,000. The main target was to establish the Rumbero structure extent for the Esmeraldas formation basalt sands into the northern part of the area. The basalt sands from Esmeraldas formation proved hydrocarbon in Rumbero 1 and Rumbero 1 side track wells. The well was tested in the Esmeraldas formation with low productivity. If you can see in here, we got a, a very low value of permeability, 0.3 millidarsis during the DST1. And the well found two intervals. The first one in the upper sandstones that are low pressure sandstones that produce uh, 37 barrels of formation water and traces of oil with 31.2 degrees of API. The other in the lower sandstones high pressure. Many mechanical and operational issues did not allow to acquire complete geological information and complete and test the lower part of the formation. Because of that, the well was abandoned and there was an impossibility to prove the lower sandstone results. So as you can see into Rumbero 1 and Rumbero 2, both of them with side tracks in terms of they are the, I wouldn't say that they are the most important ways into the area, but they are at least the most recent ones with productions, with tests. Both of them uh, have to abandon maybe because of mechanical issues. Both of them found, for example, Rumbero 1, when they were testing the formation, they had that mechanical issue that they didn't allow them to test the other couple of tests and they had to make the, side, the whole side track. So in order, or bearing that in mind, maybe uh, drilling new wells, taking that into account with uh, maybe lessons learned by Ecopetrol, maybe uh, a drilling could be successful into the area. We had as well from the 50s, Reforma 1 well, that was a well drilled by International Petroleum Colombia in 1956 with a measured depth 
of 11 and 358 feet, despite the fact that sandstone samples from the drill cuts had good petrophysical properties, good porosity and good permeability, any of them showed hydrocarbon stains of inter, uh, in the interest intervals. So this is a seismic interpretation that has been performed by the AGNH. So into this line that is at the southern area of the block, we can find that the tertiary units, Colorado, Mugrosas, and La Paz Esmeraldas, are involved into this anticline that is related to this area, and that maybe we could find some Lisama truncation against the unconformity. This one, um, this light green color in here of the horizon is the top of the Umir formation. So the unit above this one uh, should be Lisama. So drilling this one, and maybe with this structure, could be of interest uh, as the well Monoraña and also Pardo found in other part of the, of the basin. This one in here is another deep line a bit northern to the one that I've shown before. This, is, this one as, as well had an anticline here that are involving uh, tertiary units, post Eocene units. And as well, we can see in here that we have the Lisama units that maybe have truncations against the Eocene unconformity. Here we, we are uh, pointing out the different prospects that we have identified. We think that maybe a uh, Rumbero one uh, maybe could be uh, a bit low into the structure. And as well, we have in here another structural area. We have in here into the light blue arrows, so the graphic opportunity identified for this summer that maybe are truncated against the, the, the unconformity. It's important to be reminded that we have like that's that sort of maybe doubt about the Lisama because it's not easy sometimes to identify and not easy to give a continuity into the interpretation because of the unconformity. So that's the risk over there to know if Lisama is present or not. The last one that I'll be presenting today of the Middle Magdalena Basin is the BMM10, that is an incorporated area, it's a proposed area by the industry as well. So this one is located surrounding the Opon field that is located in the Department of Santander with a block area of 953.3 square kilometers. We are here into the edge of the boundary of the Santander department we are as well surrounded at the east, uh, the west uh, world part by uh, BMM5, BMM6, BMM9, and BMM49 that are uh, EMP contracts. Uh, so into the infrastructure, we got five stations. We got Opon, Santa Rosa, Sebastopol, Basconia, La Belleza. We got this pipeline that is passing into the, into, across the area, through the area. And as well, we got nearby, like at La Belleza and Sebastopol and Basconia, we got a gas and an oil pipeline. And as mentioned before, we got a station in Opon that is a, that is a field that's been producing since the 80s into in, at the middle of the, of the area. This is the database the seismic that is available. We got a 3D that has been acquired into the Opon field, but as well, we got a good coverage, at least into the northern part, by 2D seismic programs. We got a total of 17 seismic surveys with a total length of 953.36 kilometers. And one survey, the Opon 3D 2010, with a total area of five kilometers into the BMM 10.1. Those are the wells that have been drilled. There are no wells drilled into the area. Most of them have been drilled into the Opon Escocia, Lilia, and Angie fields here into the mid sector. And uh, we got as well some wells that have been drilled this one into an, MPA, an ENT, ENT area and Guayacan that is into an available area. So, as we can see, Guayacan uh, was drilled into 1978 with a total depth of 30,141 feet. All of them we target at uh, La Paz Esmeralda formation. Into the fields that we got inside the area, we got Lilia, Angie, and Opon. Angie, the, the first drill was drilled in 2013, and the last one, at least so far, was drilled in 2019 with four wells drilled and a total of 21 wells drilled into the mid sector of the, of the area. This is the Wayakan. 
this is the, the structural section that was proposed by the ones that built the well. So the well was drilled by a cooperator in 1978 with a measured depth of 30,141 feet. The target was to prove La Paz formation sandstones in the anticlinal de Pont Pinchout due to the drilling information of the Scotia One well. The electric locks showed general zones of interest between the 9,150 to TD, that's La Paz Esmeraldas. In the same interval, interval uh, from 2000, uh, in the interval from 2,234 and 2,242 after the well was dropped, it was started with a gas flow that was the first DST. Uh, three different DSTs were taken at the well. The second one in the interval 9,865 and 9,852 was swapped and after several attempts, four barrels of 33 uh, degrees of API and input water were recovered. The interval of 10,971 and 10,964 was acidized and swapped, recovering water, acid and three pounds of porphine. It was not possible to test any of the zones below uh, 11,374 feet. This is the seismic interpretation that we have carried out. This is an example of an anticline that because of the angularity of the faults in here, we think that is because of a pop-up flower structure, positive flower structure that are involving sediments below La Luna, maybe about proximity. Uh, all of these, all of those, and as well, of course, the tertiary units. It's, it's important to bear in mind that into this area of the of the Middle Magdalena Basin, uh, the Eocene and the Miocene and the different possible unconformities are not as seen as in other parts of the of the areas. So we got maybe a whole sequence of conformity from the from the basement up to the real growth. So this one is where the seismic line is located. This one is the opportunities that we have identified. Both of them are structural. The one that I have presented that is in here. And the, and the last one that is into this area that could be related to some possible EOS and units into a subthrust that is related to the mucrosa fault. So the conclusions for the middle Magdalena Basin in the upper Magdalena Valley, one prospective sector is an, in an available area that is proposed by the ENH, the BM11, that was Glauca. And two areas proposed by the industry for incorporation, BMM53 and BMM101. Glauca had two productive wells with a cumulative production at its peak of 300 barrels of oil per day and 54,000 cubic feet of, of gas per day from the Esmeraldas formation. An upside exploratory opportunity is proposed at the west of Glauca with an estimate in prospective recovery of resources of 173,000 uh, barrels in the best estimate. Into the incorporated area of BME 53, the ENH have identified four different prospects to what possible structural traps that involve the Esmeraldas formation and two stratigraphic prospects at the truncation of lower Lisama formations against the Eocene unconformity. In the incorporated area of the, at the BMM 10-1, the ENH have identified two structural prospects that involve Eocene units, one in a pop-up structure that involves the whole sequence and one in a subtrust associated to the mucrosa pods. So thank you. Uh, I recommend you to bear in mind those couple of incorporated areas by the industry because uh, as the ENH has identified, they are really inter interesting. They have a proven petroleum system. They have plenty of areas and time contracts with production. And I'm quite sure that both of them are of interest. So thank you everyone. Thanks, Daniel. And 
Good morning and welcome to this presentation. We will present and develop and already discover reservoirs area in the Janos uh, Basin. This is the content that we will follow up in this presentation. We are going to start with some background, such as location, regional framework, available information and infrastructure. Then we will talk about analogous field nearby. And finally, we will review in detail each of the available areas of undeveloped discovered reservoirs. The fields are within the highlight area. This rectangle is located in the central eastern part of the Llanos Basin. Geographically, there are within, within the Casanare Department, approximately 71 kilometers to the north or Yopal, within the municipalities of Pas de Ariporo, uh, Trinidad, San Luis de Palenque, and Nuncha. The available area were part of the Jano 16 block contract that was signed in 2009 between the National Hydrocarbon Agency and the John Venture previously formed by Petrandina Colombia, Sucursal and Columbus Energy Sucursal Colombia, then formed by Paris Resources Colombia and Paris Energy Colombia. The undeveloped area discovered reservoirs in the area are Java, Sulawesi, Malawa, Malawi, Supremo, and Toruno. These fields produced from the hanging wall of the fall associated with monoclines, generating a structural closure against these falls. In all areas, wells were drilled and proved the presence of hydrocarbons either in the Carbonera Formation C7 or in the Mirador. For Java and Sulawesi areas, the commerciality was declared, while in the other areas, the operating company decided not to do it, mainly for economic reason and the need of building facilities such as float lines. So we know we are in the Janos uh, Basin, this is the original framework. And about available data, the total area has now well drilled. Uh, 3D seismic program, program shot in 2009 with approx 270 square kilometers that covers the entire area and approx 42 seismic lines the wells that were drilled are Hawa 1, 2, Sulawesi 1, 2, 3, 4, Malawi 1, Supremo 1, and Toruno 1. Uh, the area is close uh, proximity to pipelines. It's also as main and second, secondary roads close to different production areas. The available area are close to the Kona field that was discovered by Parex Colombia in May of the 2010 and put in production in the same year in December. That field is the main property of the block Janus 16. Kona produced for, from, for different intervals between 11,000 to 13,000 feet. Kona's average oil production for 2015 was around 650, and in 2014 was around 1,770 barrels per day. The oil production for Kona is considered light crude oil at its density range from 30 to 35 degrees. The Kona fields uh, cumulative oil production exceeds 5 million the barrels uh, by January 2014. So below we will talk about each of the available areas of undeveloped dis discovered reservoir. The first one is a uh, Hawa area. The structure of the Hawa area is made of 
of a north south anticline limit lim, limit to the east by an antithetical normal fault. In the Hawa area, two wells were drilled, Hawa one in 2012 and Hawa two in 2013, the first of which tests hydrocarbon from the C7 formation. In the seismic line, the normal fault is observed, which would generate the traps with a trick way closer for this prospect. The trajectory of the well is also shown. It's a vertical well. Below in the schematic structural correlation from the Hawa 1 and Hawa 2 wells in which a small structural difference is seen between the two wells and their corresponding water oil contacts. The lateral continuity of the main reservoir formation is evident. The production test was carried out in three intervals during, during 2012. The formation tested were Gacheta, Carbonera in two parts, uh, Carbonera C7C and Carbonera C7A. According to the interpretation of the logs and the results of the production test, the presence of hydrocarbon was proved in the both C7, A and C members of the Carbonera formation in potentially commerciality quantities. However, according to the results obtained, a higher net paid and cleaner sand, as well as the low percentage of BSW, it, it was decided to finally complete the well in the C7A member. The wells of the Java area show the typical behavior associated with the Janus Basin, in which early production present low water content, causing in some case the wells to flow naturally during the first months. Once the water starts to flow, it is necessary to supply the well with additional energy by, by means of an artificial lifting system. The Hawa one well in continuous production was, was in continuum, continuous production signed its initial completion in 2012. And the Hawa two well in general in January of the 2013. Uh, in Jan of the same year, the field was closed due to the difficulties with the community in the areas of influence on, of the project. The Hava One well was reactivated in December of 2014, and Hava Two was used for disposing the water associated with oil production for Carbonera Formation C7. In April of the 2015, there was a failure in the ESP system of the Hava One wells, which is why the field was closed at the end of the June of the same year. The operator field uh, requests for temporary suspension of the of the Hawa One and Hawa Two wells due to the failure of the Hawa One button equipment, the low product, and additional the low production uh, potential of Hawa Two, uh, around the thirty barrels oil per day. And additional uh, information, the economic viability of the project due to the international oil prices. So the community, the community production of the Java field from its reactivation until 2014 was 7,797 barrels of oil per day. And these volumes were produced from the Carbonera C7 formation. And in the following tables, uh, we can see show or we can see the production by well and by formation. Uh, so production from the field was 7,797 barrels for the year uh, in 2014 and 107,440 barrels accumulated. Below is the reconciliation of reserves from the Java fields as December of 2014, 
for a total of approximately 19,000 barrels of the developed brewing reserves, 1P, probable 30,000 barrels, and possible 12,000 barrels. Next, we will review the Sulawesi area. The characteristic structure of the field is of anticlines with close to again faults. The producing formation during 2014 is in the wells of Sulawesi field was the Carbonera again. Below is uh, the in-depth structural map at the top of the field's production formation. Following, we show the schematic structural correlation for the field where the Carbonera formation and Mirador are clear with continuous thickness. A typical side decline with the location of the Sulawesi one will appear of the left showing uh, the structure. The Sulawesi one well was drilled in 2011 and the Mirador and Carbonera formation were tested with oil of 37 and 31 degrees of API and three additional wells well drilled to all producer, Sulawesi two and three, and Sulawesi four as a water injector. The cumulative production of the fill in 2013 was 424,000 barrels of oil, an average flow of 5,400 barrels fluids per day, with a BSW of 93%. Production for the Sulawesi field took place until August of 2014 due to the progressive increment of the water production and the operator decided to suspend the production operation and then abandon planning. The cumulative production of the Sulawesi field during 2014 uh, was 52,000 barrels of oil. These volumes were production from the Carbonera C7 formation. And in the following table, show the production by well and by formation of the Sulawesi field. Uh, the active, active wells of the field were Sulawesi 1, 2, and 3, which produced in various periods during 2014. And the Sulawesi 4, uh, was well for water disposal. The Sulawesi field has declared commercial in 2013. Despite the decision of the operator to proceed with the return of the field based on an economical decision. Below is the reconciliation of the reserve for the Java field as of December of 2014 for a total of approximately 106,000 barrels of the development proving reserve 1P, probable of 96,000 barrels and possible of 47,000 barrels. So we will continue uh, review the Malawi area. Structurally, the presence of a normal fall uh, that serves as a structural trap for the accumulation of crude oil in the hanging wall of the structure is identified. The relay of this fall is the Sulawesi field described above, and the Carbonera member uh, C4 is absent, and crude oil shows where reports from two formations, C7 and Mirador. Below are the structural and stratigraphic schematic correlation for the field, where we can see the good continuity of the units of the Carbonera formation. In the e, it's with seismic light. The normal fold is observed, which would generate a three-way closure. The Carbonera Formation C7 is observed with lateral seal to the east against the shales and clays of the Carbonera Formation C6, C, C6 also acting as a seal. The production test was carried out in the Mirador and Cambornera C7 formation during, John, during 2012. The following tables shows the results obtained by swabbing in the Mirador formation and in a natural flow in the Carbonera C7 formation. According to the test carried out and the results obtained in the Malawi well, 
the carbonera C7 formation show good results in production rates and low percent of the BSW uh, Y in the Mirador formation, the results were not good. The Malawi uh, well was drilled on, uh, in June of two, 2012 after a total depth of 13,170 feet measured depth, drilling the sequence from the Guayao formation to the uni formation. Uh, the Mirador and Carbonera formation were tested with oil production of 34 and 29 API degrees. And in, in 2014, Parex informed to ANH of its unconditional decision uh, not to uh, uh, produce or continue with the, with the Malawi area. So it chose not to declare the commerciality of the field and proceeded with the ab abandonment of the Malawi wells. The cumulative production of the fields as December of 2013 was 137,230 barrels of oil. Below is the reconciliation of reserve of the Malawi fields as December of 2014 for a total of approximately 25 thousand uh, developed proven reserve, probable of 5,000 barrels and possible of 5,000 barrels too. So continue, uh, next we will review the Supremio area and then Toruno. So for, for Supremio, uh, structurally two normal faults and effort relief zone were identified, which allow the entrapment of crude oil in the honey wall of the structure according to the migration routes of the crude oil in the Janus Basin. In the east-west seismic line, the normal fold is observed, which would, which would generate the entrapment with three-way closer structure for this prospect. The trajectory of the well to the different targets is also observed in the in the figure. The drilling of the Supremo uh, one well was carried out at the end of the 2010 and the completion was carried out in the UNE formation producing 100% of water and later in middle formation with crude oil production of 31 degrees API and 80% of the BSW by swimming. As uh, around mid 2012, the activities of the Supremio project were suspended due to the social and viability to build the flow line. And during the suspension period, Paris Resource informed the ANH in a timing manner of the status of the project. However, after conducting economical analysis, the operator made the decision to abandon the project in November of the 2014. Faced with the social and viability to build the flow line that would allow fluids to be conducted from the Supremio Evaluation Area to the Sulawesi field. In 2014, Paris decided to abandon the Supremio area and return it. And finally, uh, next we will review the area uh, of Toruno uh, that was part of the My Puro contract. The structure of the Toruno field is made up for a fault monocline oriented in the now east southwest direction, which uh, head towards the northeast. In the seismic line, the structure present in the field is observed within, with the fold that limits the fields of antithetical normal type. The area is located between the fold of the Campo Arquereña fields, trained to the southwest and the northeast by the Campo Trinidad train, both 
produced from the Carbonera C7 formation. The Turuno well um, began production in December of 2005 from the C7 Carbonera formation. Initial production was 462 barrels oil per day of 28.5 API degrees. The well was drilled using only two dies to 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 only to the seismic line of Perenco and Petro Colombia. The well was closed in May of 2007. The average production potential from January to mid-May of the 2007 was 850 and 1,300 barrels of fluid per day with a water cut around 19%. The cumulative final production of the well was 63,000 in one point year of production. The results of the petrophysical analysis indicated the presence of three prospective intervals in the Carbonera formation, member C7. Uh, initial tests from the upper Carbonera were 386 barrels oil per day of 28.7 degrees API with water cut around the 63%. Based on simulation model, it was concluded that the O OAP is around 1.16 million barrel, barrels of oil with estimate recovered reserves of 208,000 barrels. So in the area, Five wells associated with antithetical normal faults were found, Sulawesi, Malawi, Supremo, Hawa, and Toruno, which produced from the hanging walls of the faults associated with monoclines generating structural closing again these faults. The type of play in the area is of a structural type associated with the hanging wall of antithetical faults. The Hava well allowed the discovery of hydrocarbon in the Carbonera Formation C7 with an API gravity of 28, and the well present failures in the bottom equipment, so it was abandonment and plug. The Sulawesi field was declared as commercial in 2013 with production as until uh, 2014. Uh, and then the decision of the operator to proceed with the return of the field based on economic efficiency. The Malawi will produce un until uh, 2013. The following year, the operating company decided not to produce the field. So it chose Dodo to declare the commerciality of the field and proceeded with the ab abandonment of the whale. The Supremo uh, One well tested hydrocarbon of 31 degrees API in the middle formation. The area was suspended and abandoned by the operator. The Toruno One will test hydrocarbons too uh, in the Carbonera Formation C7 with 28.5 uh, API degrees. So according to ANH, the content resources in the area are around 1.4 million per barrels. And for the reason it is recommended to economical evaluate opportunities according to the current oil prices. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Hello, everybody. Thanks for your time. Continuing with the presentation, I'm going to show you 
Port Develop Discovery Reservoir that are located in the Llanos Basin Portland. Those areas are Seleus, that is located here, Abedus, Maniseño, and Samari. Those are relinquished areas from different companies to the ANH, in, uh, and now they are available. We are going to start to see it from the north to the south. Well, the Leus area was part of Janos 17 block. This was an EMP contract of Brown Bill of 2008 and was signed between the ANH and a joint venture of Paris Resources, Geopark, and Verano Energy in 2009. This area is surrounded by many production fields like Caño Garza, Yamu, Dignidad, and Carupano. This map shows the available information. Seleus area that is in green is completely covered by 3D seismic, which is in purple. Janos 17, 3D, 2010. And there are three well trees uh, that I will show you in detail later. In this slide, um, in the left part, we found the structural map of Carbonera C7, where we can see the structural trap that is a monocline, faulted by an antithetical fault with direction uh, north to south. Now in the structural map of Carbonera uh, of Gacheta, we can see that the structure is preserved with a clear closure as well. Uh, those uh, formations are the main reservoirs in this area. Moreover, the, uh, here we can see the location of the wells, Seleus 1 and Seleus South. This seismic profile clearly shows us that the 3D has a good image quality. Therefore, it's easy to follow the seismic reflections of each horizon of the main reservoirs, like we can see here, C7, Gacheta, Guadalupe, Gacheta, Ubaque. Moreover, uh, through this seismic profile, it's possible to identify the antithetic fault that is affecting all the sequence with a throw of 30 milliseconds approximately, generating the lateral seal for C7 and Gacheta. It is possible that the well was located down deep of the structure because the secondary map fault is not clear in this line. Moreover, at uh, this line, it's possible to see that the well uh, was drilled uh, far from the main fault. So it's possible to drill a well in a very structural position to reach the upper part of the structure in order to improve the production. Now, uh, this correlation between Seleus 1 and Guachiria 1 shows us the continuity of the reservoirs in the area. As I said before, in this area were drilled two wells. Seleus 1 uh, was drilled in 2012 by Ransom International and was tested in Carbonera C7. Uh, this interval produced uh, 100 births per day of 37 uh, IP degrees and 47% of DSW. Cacheta formation produced a 139 pairs per day of 34 a API with 29 DSW. Also, um, there was drilled as a Leo South one in, in 2013, but was not tested due to the operational problem and the Leo South sidetrack was plugged and abandoned. Uh, these tables present the results of testing Seleus 1. In the upper part, we can see the test of Carbonera C7, where the well had production from 70 barrels up to uh, 700 barrels. In the lower part, there is the results of Gacheta formation with production from 50 barrels up to uh, 300 barrels. Now these tables present the volumetric estimation made by Ranchon International in 2012 
where they determine of carbonate acid seven, a uh, recoverable volume of eight million in phase 50, and in Gacheta formation, a recoverable volume of 3.4 million in phase 50. And in the lower part, um, there is a production of Seleut one up to 2014 with an accumulated production of more than uh, 100,000 barrels. Uh, and in 2014, they reported production of um, 54,000 for barrels from Carbonera and Gacheta formations. Uh, and important issues to mention about the area are that the com commerciality of the area was not declared. The project was not economically profitable for the company at that moment for, the, for that reason. The area was relinquished to ANA in 2017. Finally, Teleus area comes with plenty of roads and is close to Caño Garza and Trinidad stations. The second and developed discovery reservoir is a Bedus area that is uh, highlighted in green, as we can see here. This area was part of Cabo Viejo block. It is an exploration and exploitation block. This contract was signed with the ANH in 2005. This area is surrounded by many production fields like uh, Bastida, Carrizales, Heredia, Matemarrano, Saimiri, and Sopilote. All those uh, areas are in production and with an uh, original in place between 1 million up to 28 million of pairs. This is the map that shows the available information for the area. The Abedus area that is in green is completely covered by 3D seismic. Cabo Viejo 3D 2006 that we can see in purple. And also there are three well trees that we are going to see later. In this slide, in the left part, we found the structural map of Carbonera C7, where we can see the structural trap that is a monocline faulted but an antithetical fault with direction northeast to southwest. This structure is clearly defined at this uh, formation. And moving to the right, we can see that the structure is preserved at Gacheta formation with a clear close up. In this structure were real Abedus 1, Abedus 2, and Abedus 3 wells that drew uh, oil in those reservoirs. Now, this deep seismic line is showing that the seismic have good image resolution. Therefore, it is easy to identify the seismic characteristics of the main reservoirs in the Llanos Basin, like Mirador, Carbonera, Cacheta, and Ubaque Formation. Also, we can find the typical play of Llanos that is a three-way closure against the normal fault, like we can see here. The strike line is showing the closure of the structure to the north and to the south. This correlation presents the results of the wells Abedus 1 and Abedus 3. The correlation shows the continuity of the reservoirs and that Abedus 3 it was drilled down deep of the structure, approximately 20 feet down. Regarding the wells, Abedus 1 well, it was built by CNC Energy Group in 2011, and this well was tested in three intervals. Carbonera C5 that produced 100 pearls per day with 36% of BSW. Carbonera C7 formation that produced 130 pearls per day with 93% of BSW. Gacheta formation produced five pearls per day of uh, 17. IP degrees and 97 BSW. This is the lower section of the correlation where we can see the Gacheta and Ubaque formations with were tested with uh, in Abedus 1 and Abedus 3. As I mentioned before, 
a various three well was tested in carbonara acid formation and produce 18 barrels per day of uh, 29 API in degrees and 20 and 92 percent of BSW. And Waki formation produce uh, 12 barrels per day of 14 API uh, degrees and 97 BSW. Uh, this well was completed and produced from carbonera C5. The important issues regarding this area are CNC energy in, in 2013 determined and oil, an original oil in place of 1 million of barrels for the Abedus area. <clears throat> Abedus 3 was closed with production of 60 barrels of oil and 97% of BSW. In, in the other hand, the company did not have the facilities for water production. For that reason, the area was relinquished to the ANH in 2017. This is the infrastructure map that, that shows that the area uh, comes with good facilities to transport the oil production. Also near to the area, there are three uh, stations Gloria Norte, Morichal, and Araguane. Now we are going to continue with two areas located in the south, Samaria and Maniseño area. We're part of Llanos 32 block. That is an exploration and production contract of hydrocarbons signed between the ANH and a joint venture of Ranchon International and TC Oil uh, in 2009. These areas were relinquished to the ANH in 2017. Maniseño area that is in green is surrounded by areas in production as Kanaski, located here, the hub production from Mirador, Carmentea, with a production from UNE and Calona with production from Mirador and UNE. This image is showing that Maniseño area is covered with 3D seismic and there were drilled two wells that were producers. In this slide, in the left part, there is an structural mask of Mirador where we can see the structural trap that is a monocline faulted but an empathetical fault with direction north, east to southwest. Uh, moreover, there is the location of Maniseño well and Bandola well. To the right, uh, we can see that the structure is present uh, at the unit formation with a closure against the fault. Uh, but as we can see in this level, Maniseño and Bandola well are located down deep of the structure, giving the opportunity to drill a well in a better structural position for this formation. Now in this seismic profile, it is possible to see the distribution of the Mirador and UNE formations, which are the main targets in this area. The structure is a monocline faulted by an antithetical fault that is here. Moreover, this site may present a good image quality and it's possible to see that there are no shadow fault problems making a reliable interpretation. As I mentioned, in this field were drilled two wells, Bandola one and Maniseño one. Those wells had production from the main formation reservoirs of channels, such as Mirador formation. This image, <clears throat> in this image, the logs of Bandola one indicate the potential of the Mirador formation due to the gas shows had an increment in this interval, as we can see here. Bandola one was built in 2013, and the initial production was. 2,500 barrels of 29 API degrees and 34% uh, of BSW. Additionally, the table shows the accumulated production in the first semester of uh, 2013, which was uh, close to 200 barrels. 
Regarding Maniseño 1, the log presents a high resistivity that indicates the presence of oil in Mirador formation. Besides, uh, this reservoir has good quality with a gross thickness uh, of 50 feet, net gross of 94%, and a porosity of uh, 21%. Maniseño well was drilled by T1 Energy in 2012. The main target in this well was Mirador Formation. This well produced oil in Mirador Formation. This table uh, presents the production that was from 18 births up to 49 births of oil in the first semester of 2013. Well, uh, this correlation uh, with duration uh, northeast to southwest is showing the continuity of mirador formation, which is getting thicker to the north. Also, this reservoir has good pro petrophysical properties, as I said before. This table presents the production of Bandola and Maniseño wells in 2014 with values of per, uh, 400 barrels per day up to 1,000 barrels per day. Moreover, the total reserves calculated for 2012 was around 2 million of barrels of oil. Here, these tables present that Maniseño are produced a total of um, 5,000 barrels of oil during 2015, and these volumes were produced from Mirador formation. There are an important issues to have into account. The declaration of commerciality of Maniseño area was in 2016. The company finished the contract of Maniseño area in 2017. The area was relinquished to the ANH in 2017. Uh, finally, in this map, it's possible to see that Maniseño area count with roads and is located close to Santiago and many stations. Well, the last undeveloped discovery reservoir is Samaria area, which is close to production areas as Canaski, that produce from Mirador, Carmen Tea, that produce from UNE and Calona that produce uh, from Mirador and UNE formation. This image shows the available data for the area that is at 3D, Janos 32, 2010, and Samaria one well. Well, as we have been seeing, the, this structure map of Mirador formation and Guadalupe formation shows that in this area was interpreted as structural closure against the antithetic fault. The fault presents a direction northeast uh, to southwest. In this structure was drilled Samaria one well that uh, was a producer oil. This seismic line evidence the presence of the antithetic fault that generate the structural trap drilled by Samaria one well. This site shows that the normal fold affect whole the sequence. The main targets are uh, here were um, Mirador and Guadalupe formations. The petrophysical evaluation of Guadalupe evidence that uh, this reservoir has good quality with parameters as net pay of 49 feet and an effective porosity of 19%. The Samaria One Well was drilled by T1 Energy in 2012 and was tested a uh, Guadalupe formation, obtaining a production over uh, 900 birds per day with 12 API degrees and 40 DSW. Besides, the company reported a production of 1,600 birds from January in, in 2013. The following table shows the accumulated production in 2015, that was around 30,000 barrels of oil. And an important issue 
to mention about this area are was no declaration of commerciality of Samaria area, was no viable to inject water produ produced from the Samaria one well into the Manisenio injector well. For that reason, the area was relinquished to the ANH in 2017. This map shows that in the area, are roads in and is located close to Santiago station. Uh, all these areas are covered with 3D seismic of good quality. The stratigraphic correlation shows the continuity of the main reservoirs in the areas. In Seleus area where drill one well, Seleus one that was uh, tested in Carbonera C7 formation from this interval produced 100 barrels per day of 37 API degrees. Cacheta formation produced 130 barrels of oil of 34 uh, API degrees. In the Abedus area, were three two producer wells, Abedus one Abedus, and Abedus three that proof oil in carbonera formation C5 and C7. Cacheta and Ubaque formation with productions upper 130 barrels per day of of 30 uh, API degrees. The Abedus area was relinquished because the company did not have the facilities to handle high amounts of water. All the wells located in the in each area have shown an important production from the main reservoirs as Carbonera C5, C7, Mirador, Cacheta, and Guadalupe. Despite of non declaring commerciality in Samaria area, the well had production over uh, 900 barrels per day with 12 API degrees from Guadalupe formation. In the Maniseño area, were drilled Bandola and Maniseño 1 wells in 2014 with values of production of uh, 400 barrels uh, of oil per day up to 1,000. Uh, barrels of oil per day from Mirador formation. The table presents um, the contingent resource estimated by the ANH for each area that we can see here. So this is all I have. Thank you for joining us. And now I leave you with Arles Gutierrez. Thank you, Mary. Um, good morning to everybody. I'm going to present the evaluation on incorporated areas of the Janus Basin developed by the INH. This will be the agenda of this presentation. I start with the location next to the infrastructure and regional geological framework followed by the evaluation of the CPO41 after the CPO112. And I will finish with the sub conclusions. We we'll start with the location. The Janus Basin is located in the central eastern zone of Colombia. All the blocks are located within in the department of Meta, mainly. For uh, CPO, CPO41, this has an area of 60,000 hectares, and this is a 15 uh, within five municipalities in Meta and one municipality in Cundinamarca department. For the uh, CPO 11.2, it has an area of 2,469 hectares, and it is within Puerto Lopez municipality in Meta department. For this first structure, uh, the CPO block, the CPO 41 block is located in proximity of the facilities of the API, API oil field. No words in the surface part is crossing by the road to, to Villa Vicencio to Puerto Lopez. And the north, 
there are some unpaved roads uh, in vicinity of cultivation areas. For the CPO uh, 11 to block, there are unpaved roads to proximity of the oil facilities, the Almagro, Valdivia, and Janos 50A fields. Uh, in the regional geological framework, on the on the left we find the structural domain map, and the and on the right the Wheeler Regional Stratigraphic diagram, diagram. We start with the block CPO41, which belongs on the Casanare domain, is that is characterized by the extensive wet dripping monocline and normal falls, antithetical, antithetical normal falls, and associated rollovers anticline for the main trams of production fields. For the block CPO 11.2 is located in the, in the limit between meta, meta domain and bichada domain. It has a mixture for both domains that is characteristic both normal falls and suris, uh, norris, suris, and north to sour tending strikes, lead falls, and thinking parasite sediments recording affected by false and truth falls for meta domain and the pichada domain that is characterized by thin sedimentary section on lapping the basement, normal falls, and drop structures. Stratigraphically, from the east to west, uh, the CPO 11 two blocks has a sequence of carbonera formation. Discordant on the Yosinage Mirador Mirador formation, which are discordant on the economic basement of Paleozoic rocks. Uh, the main reservoir is Mirador formation, and the secondary reservoir is the sandy levels on C5 and C7 level of carbonate. In CPO41, block is a complete sequence with carbonate formation. Mirador Barco and Cuervo formation complete the Paleocene age. Discordant of this sequence, the Guadalupe formation uh, and below is the Gacheta and Une formations. The main reservoir is Guadalupe formation and the secondary reservoir is sandy levels of Gacheta and Une formation or perhaps sandy levels of uh, Mirador formation. I started with the evaluation of the CPO for one blocks. Uh, for the database, this block, the 2D semi coverage is 476 lineal kilometers distributed in 54 profiles in 15 seismic programs. The block has coverage for 49% of 3 seismic with an approximately area of 200. 93 square kilometers, and one well had been driven in 2012. The only well driven in the area is Zorro Gris 1. This went through the integrated sequence of the, to the top of the Paleozoic. This were carried out on Palos, uh, Guadalupe in two areas, in the this and this, and the last test with the sour, the sour sand of Gacheta and the upper sand of Une. As the result, as the re, as, as result trust of heavy oil in Guadalupe and light oil in Gacheta Une were obtained. In this stratigraphic correlation with the datum of the top of Gacheta, it's possible to observe that the sequence of the upper Cretaceous is absent in the Galupa. One, one well, which lead us on thinking of between Zorro, Gris, and Gulupa, the Guadalupe and Gacheta formation truncate against the level of the Barco Admirador, in, in possible in this part. E with this truncation, we can define that the main reservoir for the block would be with the uh, sandy levels of Guadalupe and the secondary levels on the middle and the lower sands of Gacheta. The upper seal will be a discordance and basal clay zones levels of barco formation. Within the wells near to the block, uh, we, we, we made maps to the properties uh, such as a uh, gross net and the two gross ratio. 
when made to know and behavior of the wildlife formation in this area. For the, sec for the section on the seismic repetition, it began with the layout of the most notorious levels, such as uh, the Car Carbonera C7, the Mayerador, and the top of Paleozoic. For the definition of the levels of Guadalupe, top and base, the correlation algorithm present in the function of general cell spectral decomposition in Petrel was used. Now is algorithm with the acronyms of SPICE in mean a spectral imaging of correlative events in literature. This is a very useful to the definition of discordance. With the interpretation, the, the maps in times of the top and the base of the Guadalupe were generated. Uh, for the transformation to the this calculated velocity function of the Sorovis one well was used. A calculation of map was made between the top and base of Guadalupe and the two cross to generate a new isopac map with, this, with which is as possible to define three possible zones to entrapment with objective level on bas, basal sand of Guadalupe. Following the behavior of the neighbor wells on limit or lead has defined for the possible area where the first clay level of Guadalupe would appear. In total, three leads are interpreted with a 124 million barrels of original oil in place in high estimate. It continues with the evaluation of the CPU 11 two blocks. For the database, for this block, the 2D seismic coherence is 47, 74 linear kilometers distributed in 24 profiles and eight seismic programs. The block has an coherence and 100% of the seismic with an approximately area of 25 kilometers square kilometers and no well drilled in the block. A, and a stratigraphic collection has made with the adaptum of Mirador and the distribution of the area tested in the nervous phase absorbed with a, this, the emergency support level is Mirador formation with oil between 21 and 23 AP degrees. The main C will be a carbonera C8 level. For the interpretation, the top of Paleocycle was drawn, which is observant and reflector with a high amplitude. For the interpretation of the mirror top, the combination between amplitude and the inversion and high frequency attribute calculated as was used. And the top was drawn when observing the color changes that would differentiate the mirador and carbonera CH in this part. The map, the map was generated in the time with the interpretation of the top of mirador and the transformation of the what meet with the velocity function of the Valdivia sur well. Within the mapping the, the lead has defined it with an antifor with four way closure. This lead has a potential of 6.5 million original oil in place barrels. Uh, uh, for conclusions, uh, for the CPO for one blocks, the main play is the truncation of the basal level of Guadalupe formation against the base of the Barco formation. For the CPO for one block, three leads are the interpretation with a total potential on high estimated 124 million of barrels origin all in place. For the CPO level 11, two blocks, the main play is anti four with a four way closure of the mineral formation. For the block CPO 11.2, one lead was interpreted with a total potential and high estimate of 6.5 million on barrels original oil in place. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Mari. And thank you, Maria Cecilia, for the amazing presentations of today. Uh, I think most of the questions that were in the chat and the comments as well where all of them responded or answered. And uh, if you got any further question, 
uh, we'll be glad to answer them. And if we don't have a precise, or maybe we reckon that the question could be a bit explained, we'll answer it via email. So if you have any question, do not hesitate to write it. So there is a, there is a, a question by Omar Medina. Good morning. Thanks for this excellent presentation, Maria Cecilia. In Janus, which of the areas you presented, Malawi, Salawesi, Toruno, Java, and Supremo, have tested Gacheta? And what was the result? Bueno, mira. Eh, thanks, Omar. Please turn off your camera. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Omar. Uh, about the questions, uh, Gacheta formation was proved in um, in uh, Sulawesi, Malawi, and in Toruno area. A uh, specific in the a uh, Sulawesi area, the results are good, but the company decided to continue with production in the formation, C7 formations. Uh, and I don't have information about Toruno because the field is uh, around 2011, but uh, I prefer to review the information again about this area. And uh, if you agree, I will answer about this area uh, uh, in this day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria Cecilia. And um, now uh, the question by Luis Sarmiento has been already answered by Mari into the chat section. And uh, in that, and all the questions answered, uh, we thank you all attendees of today for being present. To the companies interested, uh, do not forget to check the new incorporated areas. Maybe you will be interested in more. And thank you very much to all the people for being here today. And see you next week with the, the great presentations by, by Ion that we present in the great, great, great results of the Columbia Basin with the reprocessing and the new acquired seismic. And as well, uh, we'll be listening to the, uh, the Pacific presentation by Freddy Corredor. And we will see one area that the ANH is offering to uh, Uruba. So thank you very much. Daniel, and see you yeah. next week. Daniel, yep. just one, one, uh, one announcement. Uh, the, the, um, just please don't forget that if you want to nominate areas or incorporate areas into the process, you have to follow the new map that, uh, that is now available, the, the new quadricula. So if you, if you, if you incorporate the area, you, you must follow those, those coordinates. So don't forget to consult the map before uh, addressing any, any proposal to the ANH. That this is, uh, is going to be in place uh, starting September 8th next week. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Okay, thank you, Miguel. And see you next week, two of you.